cam feeder, as you can see, is a move, moving belt system with one conveyor here, which is running faster than the rest, which runs through the center. The idea being that the operator will load this with cans, as you can see, and the cans will then merge down into a single file as they go down to the machine, which inverts them and places them on the puck. With the cans coming in, as we want this machine to be as automated as possible with the whole line, we use photo cells on the in-feed to the machine. So if this photo cell does not see this can, this machine will not start. Right. So as the can comes in here, using these in-feed star wheel, we pitch the can spacing to match up with the clamps that you can see here. You see the clamp? Yep. The clamp then comes around the can and it holds the can in this mode and takes the can around and as the can is going around it will invert it. The puck comes in from underneath and is raised as you will see over here as we run the machine. The can continues through here as you're going to see and when we finish we bring the puck back automatically to get another can. Right. And we now want to punch a hole in the bottom of the can to enable us to flange it. And so we use exactly the same concept with the infeed cans coming in through the infeed star wheel within the pucks. Our cans are being fed through normally. The die comes up from underneath and the punch comes down from the top. After we've punched the hole in the can, we want to roll the edge to create the flange that joins the heat exchanger to the can. This machine and this machine have a lot in common. As you can see, the designs are very similar. The can will come into this machine and the punch comes up from, uh, the die comes up from underneath to create a form. The punch comes down from the top, so you push the metal and roll it into the form underneath. So you can now see in comparison to your can with the hole in it, we now have flanged inside here and created a nice shape. Okay. Okay? So now we've actually made the beverage can. The beverage can has been converted into ready to accept the heat exchanger and it will come into this machine here where we will combine the heat exchanger with the beverage can. So to see how that gets to this point, we'll go over now to the heat exchange line and you'll see the heat exchangers coming in and how they get to here. The heat exchanger is brought to the line with the activated carbon already in the can. Right. So we have our food grade coating on the outside, which enables us to put this into a beverage and not have any worry of contaminant or tainting of the drink. Sure. Okay. Our activated carbon is in the can. The can is formed, again, placed on the infeed conveyor, and we will bring this down to put it into another type of puck. This is a different puck, as you can see. Sure. The heat exchanger goes into here and it's designed so that we can marry it in that machine by putting the beverage can over and the beverage can fits inside here. The whole purpose for this is, is so that we can protect the sharp edge, the corner of the beverage can so that where you put the end on before you seam it, you don't damage it. So we've now got our HEU in the puck and we will bring it to the gasket placement machine where we automatically place this gasket into here. Wow. Now what that's done is when we put the beverage can into the here, into here where you have the curl of the beverage can, the beverage can curl now will go inside here. Right. And remember this is aluminium and the beverage can is steel. So we would worry about the electrolytic reaction between dissimilar metals right. with the gasket in place. It takes it. Basically. It's gone. Yeah. Okay, we don't have that problem. It also enables us to ensure that when we crimp them together, we do not get any gas loss right. from the heat exchanger into the beverage can. And you can see can comes out the other side and we'll now go down to the uh, turret where we mar the two together. So the beverage can comes in high, this comes in low. And as they come around, the first thing we do here is we grab the beverage can and we drop the puck away. So the puck is returned right. over here off of the can. The beverage can continues around, and this comes up underneath the beverage can, and the flange of the beverage can is inserted into here. So again, a piece of equipment that was custom built 
just for joining these two pieces together. The valve now becomes an integral part which joins all this together because we're going to crimp this and we're going to bulge this metal out oh, in right. six places. We're going to force it out okay. and it will then hold this all together. And what you have inside of here, you have a set of six collets, like little jaws, right. teeth, that will open. So when the, can, when the can comes in here, the head will come down onto the can. Yeah. Once it's found the can, it knows it's there. Then this cent center cylinder here is bringing the head down and the top cylinder drives a wedge all the way down through, causing the collets to open and crimp. Once it's reached the diameter that's preset, it will then retract and the head will come back up and we will have the accurately crimped can. So we have our can nicely assembled, held in place. Oh, wow. Firmly fixed in there now. This up here is called a rotary union. So the gas comes in through the rotary union into the displacement head and then down through these uh, stainless steel braided hoses right. to the gassing heads. Okay. So what you'll see happening, the gas head will come down onto here. This will be depressed by the head. You can see it going up and down. Yeah. It's depressed. The gas goes around the outside of this stem and comes out through the underneath directly straight into the HEU. So the CO2 then goes into the carbon and is absorbed into the carbon. Okay. Now we're filling by equilibrium. Right. Remember we said we want 10 bar of gas pressure in the machine. Yeah. So we have a 10 bar regulator on the gas supply. So even when the machine stops like this, it cannot overpressurize the can. All right. Because the regulator is set at 10 bar. Once 10 bar is in here, it is equalized, yeah. so no more gas goes in. So if you've got 10 bar over here, by the time you get around here, you've got no more gas. Right. It's 10 bar, right. that's it. So the heads come, come up after they finish gassing, and the cans are then discharged. And from here, the cans continue round. We've got two more machines on their way from England, a pressure okay. tester. Critical, make sure that the CO2 pressure is in the can and that it is not over pressure. That's a safety feature. Sure. So we have a CO2 pressure tester that will measure every can, 100% pressure testing. Right. And it will have a data analog recorder and will record every can's pressure as it comes off. So right. we will know, uh, and with the date coder, if somebody says this can was over pressure, we can go back and look at the data analysis and say, not true. Oh, okay. Okay. okay? Would that be stamped on the can itself? No, no, it will be the date code will be stamped on the can. Right. And the date code will then match the data that we have logged here. Okay. All right? We will put the actuators on here ourselves. And then after we've put the actuators on, the can comes down here where we will remove the can from the puck. And we turn it back over so the open end is up and it enables us to fill it. But more importantly, it enables us to put it into a box or onto a pallet to ship it off to a beverage company where it will be filled. The pucks are coming in here. It's grabbed by the unit, pulled out, the puck, the puck is dropped away, the can is inverted and comes out, voila. So you've now got your finished chill can that would go either, in, either into the beverage facility that he's going to put in here or will go onto a pallet or boxes and be shipped off to the filling company ready to be filled. Just about stopped, I think. Yeah? Yeah, stopped. Okay. You want to open it? Yeah. Try it. <laughs> it's on screen. It's safe. <laughs> yeah. It's only soda water. Did but I finish it off? Yeah, it's too old. Sorry. 
Okay. Yeah. That a separate charge is yeah. We want to empty the liquid out. This, this black material that you see here, this is uh, coconut-based activated carbon. So it's manufactured from coconut shells where, and converted into a carbon, and then it is activated under a steam process where we control the actual pore sizes inside of the carbon, creating surface area that when we inject the CO2 on the gassing machine, the CO2 then is adsorbed into the carbon and we can actually load this carbon with gaseous CO2. And then when we actuated the button, the heat that was in the beverage actually excites the CO2 that's in here and drives it off and it comes up out through the valve. That's what you could hear. The hissing sound was the CO2 coming off of the carbon changing the heat. So it's a true heat exchange system. And what we're using is the advantage of knowing that when you release the CO2, you will actually get a temperature drop. And that temperature drop, you can still feel it even now. Even though you've cut this up, you can actually still feel it. It's still cold. So we make this, this carbon um, content. We take the carbon as a powder and we compact it into a solid slug. And we then push the solid slug into the aluminium can inside of the beverage can, the heat exchanger, and then attach it to the beverage can, as you saw over there, with the valve, the crimp, and then we gas it. It's reclaimed CO2, we're not making CO2, we're not remaking CO2, we're taking CO2 out of the environment that's already there, using that. That's how it works, I and mean, it's, in many respects, we think it's quite simple, but I guess that's because we've been working on it for so long. <laughs> we just take it for granted that you all should know that. <laughs>